Good evening. Thank you for joining our broadcast. This is the voice of revival in Germany. And our message tonight is a, is a message which is very, very important to you, to any Christian and to any unsaved person. What happens is that we are trying to dispel any wrong information. And a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a bad person. I just keep going the way I'm going. And that's wrong. That's wrong thinking. That's wrong information. Now, our broadcast is designed to help you get over these problems, get over the living problems, get over the, all of the, the situations in life that might confuse you, might depress you, might distress you. And that's very obvious. You've only got to travel on a train or a tram or a bus and look at the faces. That's why 99% of Germany is not Christian. They're in depression. This country is being oppressed by a demonic force. And so we have to come to an understanding as to whether we're able to get forgiveness from God for any of our past sins. And it's important to understand that that forgiveness is there. Because if you turn to the last chapter in Mark, it describes when the women went to the tomb on the Sunday morning to anoint the body of Jesus. They came to the tomb and the stone had been rolled away and there was a an angelic figure inside the tomb and the figure the angel said to the women he has risen he is no longer here go and tell the disciples that our master has risen go and tell them and also Peter now, it's very significant that they said, go and tell the disciples and Peter. Why should that be significant? Well, Peter was the apple of Jesus' eye. He was his right-hand man. He was there all the way. He was the one who smote the ear of the soldier when they were trying to arrest Jesus. And yet Jesus knew that he was frail and he was a weak human being and that he would deny him. He said, before the cock crows, you will have de denied me thrice. So it's very significant that when the angel told the women to go and tell the disciples and Peter, in other words, he was welcomed back in the fold. Forgiveness was there for Peter and forgiveness is there for you if you require it. If you ask God for forgiveness, his wonderful, loving uh, forgiveness is there for you. So you can treasure this section of Mark as a guideline that forgiveness is there for you, forgiveness is there at any time. And even if you're a Christian and you slip off the rails for some reason, you can come back and ask the Lord to forgive you and repent and try again and try harder to live the Lord's way. So that is a very, very significant turning point in all of our lives because we don't want to see 84 million Germans go to hell. We want to see them go to heaven to enjoy the heavenly realm. But before they get to heaven, that they can enjoy life here on earth. They can smile and be joyful and be happy and, and, and be able to enjoy what the Lord has placed here for us to benefit from, to be able to enjoy a beautiful blue sky or enjoy a lovely day at the beach, to be able to do those things and to have the money to enable us to be able to afford to do those things 
which we like and enjoy in life. So we have a golden opportunity here as Christians and if you're not a Christian you have a wonderful opportunity to become a Christian and walk this way because Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and if we follow Jesus example then we can confidently walk forward and know that if God is with us, who then can be against us? We can prevail in all circumstances. We can walk in victory. We can walk in good health. We can walk in prosperity. We can walk in a happy family situation. In other words, our lives can take on a balance that we may never have dreamt possible. But it's only if we believe. And even if you've got a faith as small as the tiniest seed that's known to man, and that's a mustard seed, if your faith is as small as that, then salvation can be yours. When I was 19 or 20, we used to enjoy going to parties, there was a group of us, and one of our friends in a Billy Graham crusade gave his life and his heart to the Lord. And suddenly overnight, he changed. He wasn't a party animal anymore. He was a, a religious fanatic in our view at that time. And we were, we were misguided in our judgment at that time. But my friend Keith said to me when I was 20 years of age, Francis, come to, the, come to a, a Bible meeting with me. I said, oh Keith, forget about that though. Just, I'm okay, leave me alone. And I think many people sort of think this way. But over that conversation, he also said to me, Francis, I will always continue to pray for you, for your salvation. And when I was 38 years of age, 18 years later, I came to the Lord, and uh, very happily so. I made a decision then that changed my life. And uh, some six months later, I was asked to speak at a full gospel businessman's meeting. And uh, when I got up to speak, I looked over in the room and here was this man who'd sowed the mustard seed. And I was able to give witness to him and thank him for his sincere prayers over that period of time, that long period of time. I was a very slow learner and uh, I was a very, very, uh, uh, well, I couldn't say happy, but I, I was certainly well and truly in Satan's camp. Anything and everything that was wrong, I was involved in. So it was a relief to me. It was like stopping hitting my head up against a brick wall when I decided to become a Christian. It was a momentous decision for me and I can assure you if you're not saved if you're not sure whether you're going to heaven or not here's your opportunity to get saved to make that decision right now because you may never get the other uh, another opportunity right now is your time for decision making and if you want the best things in life for you then the decision you make is to invite the Lord into your heart. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just come to you now in humility. We humble ourselves before you, Lord, because you are a great God. You are a loving God. You have sacrificed your Son on the cross that our sins will be forgiven, that our sins will be washed away that our healing will occur washed by the blood of the Lamb. So, Lord, we ask you now to come into our lives. Come in right now into our heart. Fill our heart with the power of your Holy Spirit. Change our lives. We don't want to be sinners anymore. We want to live upright. We want to live a godly life. We want to be a Christian and follow your leading. So thank you, Lord for this opportunity. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. 
and thank you for saving our souls. And from tonight on, we know that we know that we're going to be with you in heaven because you have tonight saved our souls, forgiven our sins, and shown us a new way of life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.